Hey friends, welcome to the Johnson City Living Podcast, where we learn about the people, places, events, and flavors that make Johnson City just a lovely place to live. I'm your host, Colin Johnson, with the Colin and Carly Group and Keller Williams Realty. If you're interested in buying or selling a home in the area, or if you're looking at investing in a rental property, give us a call at 423-930-8003, and we will look forward to helping you. Now, let's get to today's episode. I'm super excited for you guys to get to know my new friend, Jared Yannis, with Guns and Gadgets. Welcome to the podcast, Jared. Thank you. It's an honor to be here. Appreciate it. Um, You're probably new to cameras, microphones, audio, that kind of stuff. So just, you'll get the feel for it here in a minute or two, but (laughs) just hang in there. (laughs) So Johnson City Living, what's your favorite thing about Johnson City? You are a new person here too, so this will be a good perspective. Yeah, so I, as you know, I came from uh, the evil north. I came from, from New England. And I don't think you're referring to the cold. Are no, you, maybe? no, uh, no, Massachusetts, where uh, freedom was born but no longer resides. Uh, <laughs> and being somebody who is in the freedom game, uh, who values our, our rights tremendously, uh, it was tough to live there, and especially growing, you know, with four kids growing up. It was just tough to put them in that area. So. Uh, once I was freed from my shackles of my previous employment, uh, when I retired, I decided it was time to move somewhere free. And uh, with some help of some friends, I was recruited here uh, heavily. And uh, I love this area. It's, I should have done it 10 years ago. It's beautiful here. It is awesome, isn't it? Um, now, did you like go, okay, here are the different states that I would look at. And then you get you and Kathy go around and tour different areas and then like choose Johnson City or how did it, how did you pick JC? So my wife, Kathy is uh, a heaven sent. Uh, she told Amen me. Amen to that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She, uh, she said, wherever you want to go, we'll go. Uh, Cause I, my new job, uh, my new career, I can work anywhere that there's internet. Yeah. Um, so it came down to three states. It was uh, Texas, Tennessee, and Florida. Okay. Texas, because uh, they've been doing a lot of things right on the freedom trail. And everything's bigger. Yeah, yeah, but everything's hotter uh, and, <laughs> and browner. I don't, I don't do well with with like high heat. Yeah, uh, Florida because Blackout Coffee is there, which I'm a part owner of. Yeah. So I figured if I was closer, I could do more, maybe employ my kids at some point. And then Tennessee uh, was was number one for me. It, it was going into the deciding factor, and of course Johnny, who was here a couple weeks ago, yeah, uh, was a good friend of mine. He uh, put the recruitment effort on uh, big time. It's just uh, like the mountains is it's serene for me. It's it's a, uh, how I get to relax as I look out my back porch and I look at a mountain range and you can't beat that. You can't beat uh, it, especially when it's snowing today in New England and it's like 50 degrees here. So I'll take that every day. <laughs> so Jared and I are neighbors. And so the other day I was like, hey, aren't you excited about the snow? And you said, what snow? <laughs> We don't have snow here compared to, say, as Jared. And then he was like, I don't want it anyway. Like, so no snow would be perfect for you. But yeah. our little three inches of snow we got the other day was just a dusting. The kid, I don't know where you're watching, but the kids here got a week off from school <laughs> for two inches of snow. Now, for those who are of, like north. There was maybe four inches. We don't lose school until they hit six inches or more. So that was comical for a whole week. <laughs> that was pretty comical. The whole city shut down over four inches of the snow. It was a big deal here, Jared. Big allegedly, deal. allegedly. All right, so where did you grow up? So I grew up in Worcester, Massachusetts, which is the second largest city in New England, dead center of the state of Massachusetts. Yeah. Uh, I grew up uh, kind of different than most folks. Grew up with uh, uh, a divorced family. Grew up in a housing project area. Uh, grew up kind of rough. Uh, but uh, it was at that point I realized that uh, that wasn't for everybody, and I wanted to be part of the fix, right. which is like I was... I don't know, probably seven when I decided I wanted to be a police officer. That's cool. Yeah. What different. was the uh, what was the switch there that you're like, hey, I want to be a police officer? What what do you think led you to that? Because uh, I got to see a lot of things that no kid should ever see, mm. you know. And I decided that uh, I could probably do something to help kids in that that uh, area. So that was part of my career goal was to to try to be that somebody that whoever was calling me to help fix their craziness they could lean on and trust. Yeah. Yeah, I, I got that feeling from you right when we met. Like you love helping people, yeah, and you could just feel it, and um, it feels good. So, talk to us a little bit how you you about your your job. What's your day job <laughs> and night job? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't stop. Uh, so uh, I uh, I run the channel Guns and Gadgets on YouTube and all of the socials. Uh, it's currently the largest Second Amendment news only channel uh, in the world, which is kind of weird when I hear myself say That's that. That's awesome. 
And uh, from that, it's allowed me, I've been doing that for a decade now, uh, but it's been my full-time gig since uh, probably the last six years. Uh, even though I still had my other job, uh, that took the back seat to, to trying to teach people about freedom. Where can, so where, where do you do this, John? Where, where would it, like people are listening right now, like how do they find you? What, tell us about your, your, your channel. Sure. Uh, so I cover anything related to litigation or legislation on the Second Amendment. Okay. Uh, and I also touch on other rights. And that people we have. who don't know the Second Amendment. What is the that? Second Amendment is our right to keep and bear arms in America. Uh, we have an inherent right from being born from our Creator uh, that we can protect ourselves. Mm. You know, the government doesn't get to tell us we can't, you know, live the next day because they don't like what we might carry for a tool. Right. Uh, it, our forefathers, uh, the, you know, the founding fathers of this country were absolutely brilliant men uh, who wrote that document. It's one of the best documents in the world. I mean, the, for a single document, to have them have that forethought that what this country could evolve to and what we might need protections from is ridiculous. I find it, I mean, I think it's almost Holy Spirit derived a little bit. You know, I think the Lord like was working through them. To, I mean, because that, the forethought to have stuff written, what, 300 years ago and it's still... 248 years ago. Yeah, yeah. and it's still you know, relevant today is just amazing. Well, they leaned heavily on their on their faith and they knew what they just fought and they didn't want it to happen again. So it was pretty cool. Uh, if you haven't read that document, I, I strongly suggest it. Yeah, it's awesome. Okay, so your channel is all about the Second Amendment and defending yourselves. And so you're talking about how you look up different bills and... Yeah, it's nonstop. So every, every single day there are dozens of bills filed in this country, whether they're trying to uh, restrict our rights or to enhance our rights or not, not enhance our rights because they shall not be infringed, but basically remove some of the infringements. Uh, and when I started this channel, I realized that people didn't have the ability to A, know what the cases were, how they were filed, where they were filed. But reading bills and laws is an art because it's written in Old English. And if you don't know how to read Old English, then it can be very frustrating for people. Uh, so I being have gone through three police academies in several states. And being from Massachusetts. And being from Massachusetts, came up with where it all started, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was easy for me to translate into common language so that the you know, lay person could understand it. Yeah. Uh, and I bring forth whatever happens in any state, whether it's good, bad, ugly, or indifferent. I cover it on my channel so people can be uh, aware of what's going on and be able to inform other people to right. get them uh, on the train of freedom. And I'd also teach them what they need to do to either support the bill, fight the bill, uh, how to get a hold of legislators, how to be part of the fight, how to run for office. More people need to do that uh, so that we can change the current path the country's on. Yeah. Yeah. What do you, so what are some of the things that are starting to, you're starting to see and having in, in America against, that are coming up against the Second Amendment? I mean, there's, it, you know, we can go for days probably, but yeah. what are some uh, of the major battles that we're trying to fight? Uh, they just don't want us to have guns, period. Uh, when you say they. They. Uh, the, I wouldn't even say it's Democrats and Republicans. There's an ultra-leftist, almost communist-type uh, push, the progressives in this country, that want total control of everybody in this country. And the only way you can have total control is if you render people useless and defenseless. We've seen it numerous times throughout history. You can pick a, uh, you know, a millennia and pick a couple you know, so-called leaders who disarmed the populace and then yeah. hurt the populace. And I, I do not want that to happen here. And it's my life's work to make sure that doesn't happen here. Yeah. And I mean, I think the, the general thought behind it was that, you know, should the government become a tyranny of evil, right? We can overthrow them. Yeah. Like a, we that's, go up and say, hey, it's time for a new government to take over. And, and that gonna... is the, uh, the, that's the brass tax of the Second Amendment that a lot of people don't like to talk about, but that's, it's there so that we can fight off a tyrannical government. It's just checks and balances, right? Kind of like the government set up. It's the ultimate you know? check. Yeah, it's the ultimate check. 100, no, 200 you know, plus million people who are, are armed if need to be take action. We have the largest standing army in the world. So when did you decide, hey, I'm going to start a channel to talk about our Second Amendment? Like, <laughs> what, was, what was the impetus or what was like, did you come home from a day at the office and <laughs> putting away the bad guys and you're just like, this is nuts and I just need to talk about this, what happened today or how did it get going? It's kind of funny, uh, about a decade, almost 11 years ago now, uh, my oldest son, Jake, who's now 23. Oh wow. Uh, back then, YouTube was like uh, cat videos or holster reviews. And being a firearms instructor for a long period of time, I'd watch these, fire, uh, these 
reviews and say, you know, I can do better than that. And I just happened to be out with a sh uh, shoulder injury that I had surgery on. Uh, so my son called me on it and he held up an iPhone 4 and said, well, let's do it. Let's do so it. my first video was recorded in my basement of my house back in Massachusetts. I didn't know anything about lighting, audio, uh, backdrop. There's cobwebs in the background. <laughs> Uh, and I, I did a video on a holster, and uh, not a lot of people wanted to watch that. But uh, it it kind of blossomed into other things because I didn't know that you had to buy things you wanted to review for your ah, channel. So yeah. you know, being a, a a a cop on a very low salary with uh, you know a growing family, you couldn't I couldn't spend a lot of money on right, other things like, like guns and rifles and shotguns and ammo and yeah. cool things. All the cool stuff. So I did a couple videos uh, related to Massachusetts law. Uh -huh. when our then attorney general decided to change laws in Massachusetts for the worse, and everybody was watching that. Everybody wanted more information, and, and it kind of took happening? off from there. Yeah, yeah, it took off from there, because people didn't know where to get the information. And, and back then, I was the only person on YouTube who did anything legal like that. Now you have a lot of people who do, you know, there's a bunch of attorneys on, on YouTube, but I was the only one. Everybody else was doing fun stuff, and I was doing legal stuff. And it took a while for the channel to grow, but it's blossomed into, you know, uh, it's a blessing to be able to do this and call it a, you know, a job. It is so cool, like just the, the technology and how it's just continuing to thrive and grow and change. And you got a lot to keep up with, though, right? I mean, it's nonstop. You got everybody biting at your ankles too, because you're like, hey, I want to be the number one. Um, yeah, it's not that for me. I, I, I try to help every channel I can. Um, the more people we have out there spreading the word of freedom, the better. Mm -hmm. I don't have to be number one. Um, but I want everybody to remember I was still the first. <laughs> <laughs> How do you see your channel evolving in the future? Like, what do you see for guns and gadgets? What do you, what do you think is going to happen? Well, it's, it's allowed me to do a few things that I never thought I would ever see myself doing. I, uh, I now travel the country and speak for different groups. Uh, in fact, in a couple of days, I'll be going down to Phoenix to speak at their capital for the Second Amendment. Uh, and I just booked to the, on the way down here. Uh, I'm going to go to Florida for the week after to do another speaking engagement. I just get back from a couple others. Going to Mar-a-Lago? Uh, no, no, <laughs> I don't think he knows who I am. But uh, <laughs> it's just cool just to think that people want to hear me talk about what's passionate to me yeah. and the fact that I could potentially get somebody to care about our rights as much as I do and then to take action on their own to maybe influence a couple other people. It's, it's amazing. Okay, listening, somebody you know on our podcast is listening to you and they're like, hey, what do I need to do to like get involved or help change policy? Because it feels like almost you're, you can't do it anymore. You know, like it feels like they, we talked about earlier, are yep. controlling it and, it's, and the it is the, the government and the, just America now. What do you think about that? Well, first off, we need to stop that type of thought process right. because the politicians love the fact that we feel we are helpless. And then we don't vote and they right. just control it all. Exactly. Well, they are our employees and people need to remember that. Uh, so you don't have to be a YouTuber. You don't have to be a, a public speaker. You don't even have to run for office. You just need to be involved. And you can do that in a couple different ways. You can uh, take a friend or uh, a neighbor or a family member to the range and let them experience what it's like to actually become proficient at a tool that they can use to defend their children, their mom, their neighbor, uh, their community. Uh, because shooting is fun. You know, mm -hmm. A lot of people are afraid of them. You know, as long as you point it in the right direction, it's a very fun sport. It is a lot of fun. And uh, people need to understand that's the, the, the grassroots is where the power is. If we can get more people involved and just exercising their right. In the last, since COVID, there have been millions and millions of people who have started to join this community and buy a gun for the first time and take training. And it has politicians scared because people now realize they're their own first responder. Uh, but that's the big part is just, just do something. You know, whether you're talking to folks at work, you're, you're sharing videos, uh, you're talking to politicians, making that phone call, getting to know them. There are a lot of things people can do to get involved. You don't have to be in front of a camera. You don't have to be a big speaker. You don't have to, you know, have the eyeballs on you. There's a lot of stuff you can do in the back that, uh, that is extremely effective and vote obviously yeah oh, absolutely yeah we have to and you like you said earlier get out there and get involved and yeah. run for office right i mean yeah if you think you can do it better we need more red-blooded americans to run for office uh our forefathers when they designed this whole thing it was go serve a couple of years and then go back to your farm and live under the rules and laws that you passed uh things have changed they don't do that anymore but uh, we're getting more uh candidates who think like us yeah. are just like us to start to run for office. We need to get behind them too. What do you think would be like, um, I guess the, the, how would we 
cause some serious reform in the government, you think, to where we can kind of take it back, like you're saying? I mean, what would need to happen? Because uh, it, it is a big undertaking. Disobey is a big thing. Uh, they, they're not our bosses. Right. You know? Uh, there is a, a Supreme Court case that says any law that is repugnant, repugnant to the Constitution, you don't have to follow. And somewhere we've lost that, that, you know, when they pass a law that says you can no longer speak certain ways or you have to take some type of medication or you can't go out and can't go to churches because a couple people might be sick. Uh, that's not what our, our Constitution says. Our rights are our rights and they mm -hmm. don't get, we don't lose them because people are afraid. We don't lose them because people don't like us. People need to understand their rights, and a big part of that is knowing what the Constitution says, because that is the document, that is the policy and procedure handbook for the United States of America. Mm -hmm. So everybody read the Constitution. That, uh, Step I, try to, I read it twice a week. Oh, do you? Yeah. That's awesome. I didn't know that. That's cool. I'm just, yeah, I'm glad we're friends, because you're <laughs> pushing me to be better. I need to read that uh, all the time. All right, let's go back. What was your first job ever? Oof. First job ever uh, was a grill cook at Papa Gino's, which is a pizza uh, chain in, uh, in New England. And you say we have great pizza here all the time. No. <laughs> no, you don't. And for everybody in Johnson City, I apologize. <laughs> but you have been bamboozled. You do not have good pizza. There's a couple good spots in town. Little Caesars is great. Little I don't know Caesars what you're talking about. Horrible. <laughs> I'm telling you. I like Rocks. It's the worst. When Rocks is on. Rocks is good. Rocks is solid. Yep. Uh, Giovanni's can be good. Okay. Uh, but... I mean, if you like New England, you know, if you like New York style pizza, it's tough to find anywhere. Sims, you've been to Sims? I've been to Sims. Okay. When they're on, they're good. Yep. When they're not, they're not. <laughs> Just like most places. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Who has been influential in your life to where you're like, I would have not been a YouTube influencer without this person? Anybody? Yeah, if it's specific to YouTube, um, uh, Probably the biggest influence to me uh, is another uh, friend of mine who lives in North Carolina. His name is Mr. Guns and Gear. He has a huge channel on YouTube. And I used to watch him every video he put. I still do. I mean, yeah. like, hey, Mike, if you're watching. Hey, Mike. Um, he got me to the point to say, like, if he can do it, I can do it. You know. And there's a bunch of people, although the number is small, the original people who were doing firearms on, on YouTube back in the day, uh, if they didn't do what they did, then I wouldn't have a platform to, right. to stand on. Uh, and another big one in the community, his name is Paul Harrell. Uh, Paul is out on the, the left coast, and he un is unfortunately uh, battling pancreatic cancer right oh. now. Uh, but he was one of the OGs, and uh, we're doing a, a fundraiser with TriStar Trading to try to raise money for him and his wife uh, while he is still with us. We'll put TriStar in the show notes so people can click yeah. on there and order shirts and yep. help support his God family. bless you, Paul. Um, yeah, that's, that's cool. So let's talk about YouTube a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, it's changing, right? I mean, like you kind of have to stay ahead of the algorithm yeah. and all that. Talk about that for people who are listening about YouTube. Because I thought you just get on, you, like we're on now, you just put out a video, it stays there. It's going to obviously get traction, but no. No, it's tough. It, it really is tough. And depending on what your specialty is, what your niche is, it's different. Uh, for my niche, the Second Amendment, uh, YouTube is not really a gun-friendly organization, so they make it really, really hard for us to excel. The algorithm changes numerous times a year as they try to tweak things and value things differently. Um, but it, it's for me, I just keep punching. You know, I just keep doing it. I do what I do. I put my head down and I just keep pushing because the people who want to know will find me, uh, and the people who don't want to know don't watch anyway. So right. uh, for me, it's just uh, I'm gonna. I'm going to be there until there is no me anymore. You know, whether they delete me or whatever, I'm just going to keep doing me. Yeah. And if people want to know anything about the Second Amendment, they can count on me being there. Well, I think there are a few people that like you. I hope so. How many subscribers do you have currently? Uh, I'm pushing 700,000 right now. And the goal's like, we want to get you to 10 million, right? So that you can help, like, enact policy and my, change things. My goal was 100. 100. It took me a long time to get to get 100, 100 subscribers. Man. Yeah. It's... It's humbling. I, I don't take it for granted. It could be gone tomorrow. Sure. Uh, it's just, it's extremely humbling. Yeah. yeah. If I could hit a million one day, that would be pretty cool. That would be cool. Um, I think you just won an award for um, being an influencer or different things out in Vegas. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, there's a company, uh, Forge Relations, that throws a, an industry uh, award ceremony every year. It's in its, I think, fifth year now. Uh, and this year was out at SHOT Show. And uh, I was uh, 
given the award of influencer of the year, which is so sweet little, to even hear me say that. Well, and he does, he is super humble and doesn't want to say anything like, oh yeah, I kind of want influencer of the year. Like he doesn't <laughs> want to mention it, but that's a big deal. Thank you. Congratulations. I, thank you. I, uh, I'm not influential, ask my wife. <laughs> <laughs> no one has a prophet in their own home is, is the truth for sure <laughs> and our wives are just so so yeah gracious to put up with us um so let's talk about like um somebody who may be wanting to start a channel i mean obviously you you started it 10 years ago so you've got like just i don't even do you even know the number of videos you put out total to date it's probably thousands thousands yeah right and so Talk to us a little bit about YouTube and how somebody could get started and, and start something and like what would cause them to do, maybe get, do well, but you, probably passion would be the first thing to start. Talk about. Yeah, you gotta really, really wanna do something uh, and do it well enough that you can show other people how to do it. That's the key. I mean, chances are everybody watching already has that skill, that they do something good enough where somebody else wants to know how they do it. Just hit record, like seriously, don't, I, you don't need a fancy camera. You, I started with an iPhone. Uh, there are still hundreds of thousands of channels that just use cameras yeah. on phones. Uh, if you had to do anything, I would say focus on a decent light. You can get a decent ring light for 50 bucks on, on Amazon. Yeah. Because uh, lighting and, and a half decent audio is where you need to be. Right. Uh, but your phones, pretty they, good. Their, their audio is really, really good nowadays. Uh, but just do it. Like, don't wait and think, I, you know, I'm not good enough. Just do it because you'll get better. You'll become more comfortable speaking in front of a, a uh, you know, a camera. You'll be more, you're never comfortable seeing yourself on film. I, when I edit every day, I'm like, oh man, I look like a clown. <laughs> uh, that never goes away. That never goes away. But just, uh, just do it and be dependable. If you tell people I'm going to put out a video every week on Thursday, do it. Yeah. Because people who want to know what you're doing, they're going to look forward to seeing you. And that's how you build an audience. Yeah. Do you have any ideas for channels out there that you'd love to have somebody do? That's a tough one to put you on the spot. Yeah, it's a good question. Um, I have a, a couple of passions, as you know, I love cars. Mm -hmm. um, if you like cars, do it, because everybody's, they're, they're eating up that content. Like yeah. I will watch a million videos about the Dodge you know, Hellcat motor or the Corvette C8. I will just watch everything I can about it just in case somebody tells me something that nobody else is saying. Right. Yeah, it's, and it's just fun too because you can, um, nowadays with all the cameras and audio and stuff, you almost feel like you're in the vehicle. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty good. Some of them now, they're, they're virtual reality and you can have headsets that kind of immerse you in the video. It's pretty cool. Speaking of that, where do you see the future of that kind of stuff going? Like the Google or the Glass or whatever it's called from Apple. Like I just that. bought one. I Did bought, you? Yeah, the Vision Pro. Yeah, is it cool? It is. It's like it looks like you're in like some kind of IMAX theater when you're watching the movie, it's and then you can sit amazing. here and like, it, like you can if you watch a, vi a movie on Apple uh, Apple TV Plus, you can s pick where you want to sit in a theater, front, middle, or back row. Uh, you can you know, change your lighting. Uh, if you watch it on uh, different apps, you can like I think it, I haven't watched it on Disney Plus, but you can dim the lights, and when the movie starts, you can still see like the the walk lights, like the emergency lights. Oh, that's lights. awesome! Yeah, it's pretty cool what what some of the uh, the apps can do. It's amazing. I watched the like the Mandalorian for about fifteen minutes as a as a trial, and it was like I was there. It was pretty cool. You're just in there in the battle. Yeah, and there's something to be said about you know watching a YouTube video on a three hundred inch screen. It's pretty cool. How do you feel like AI is going to affect some of the the stuff on YouTube and what you do? Yeah, it's I think it's dangerous. Uh, it needs to, there has to be some guidelines for AI because, uh, you know, I've watched the Terminator movies. <laughs> We've all watched the Terminator movies and they're very scary. I don't want anybody coming back. You know, like any tool, uh, any advancement is, is cool as long as we know what we're going to do with it. It's, I used, it lived in the Boston area and so the Boston Dynamics, they have those dogs you know, the, the mechanical dogs that can do just, just about anything in the world. Really? You can't knock them over. You can't knock them off balance. They have robots you can't knock off balance. So that's concerning. Yeah. Uh, but it, it, I think AI will help us in a lot of areas. Um, but uh, yeah, they, I, I think there needs to be some type of... Put some guardrails around. Yeah, there needs bit. to be some type of leash on that. Yeah, and I don't know how you do that because it's kind of like... The Terminator itself healing and fixing and thinking and growing and well look at Elon Musk he's our generation's Ben Franklin and yeah they just he just said that they have the first human being with an uh, the Neuralink chip in their brain I mean that's yeah they're quadriplegic right or uh, yeah I don't know if that's an area I mean 
That would be crazy. There's pros and cons to Hopefully it, but I think that's a dangerous area. If that could give someone like mobility though, again, I mean, that's just awesome. Yeah. Uh, I think, yeah, there is wonderful things about technology and then evil in the world and it can take it and unfortunately just do evil things with right. it. Right. Yeah. That's the scary part. That is the scary part. What's something cool you're working on right now? Working on a speech for Phoenix this weekend. You're going to Phoenix. That's <laughs> yeah. right. Yeah. Getting out of the, uh, the sort of cold weather. 60 today. Is it cold here? Not yet. Not for you. What is cold for you? 25, 30 below. <laughs> it will never be cold here for you. That's right. You and Kathy are like, oh, we live in paradise. That's, it's never cold. It's gorgeous. I called my mom uh, last snowstorm they had in New England. I called her and laughed at her. <laughs> <laughs> and then I hung up. <laughs> hey, mom. Sorry about that. <laughs> oh, man. That's hilarious. Um, okay. So how can, like, if I wanted to, our listeners want to connect with you, follow you, subscribe, where, how do they find you? Just search Guns and Gadgets on uh, YouTube. That's probably the easiest way to locate me. Uh, pretty much on any platform, I'm on all of them because uh, you have to be where the eyeballs are. Uh, but that's the easiest way. Okay. Um, all right, let's back to Johnson City. Mm -hmm. So you're living here. You're loving life. It's the best ever for you. What are some of the favorite things that you and Kathy, um, like if, say restaurant wise, I know we don't have any pizza joints, that you love, <laughs> but there might be some other places you'll go and, and frequent. What's uh, like, you know, let's say you're going to get a burger. Where would you go for a burger here? Uh, so pals for somebody who's never experienced pals is amazing. Isn't like good? cheddar rounds. Have you gotten them with fry seasoning? on? Yeah. I'm not a fan of the fry seasoning. Okay. Uh, they have grill salt too, which is the, stuff they put on the patties when they put it on the grill. Yeah, I gotta try that. It's pretty good. But Cheddar Rounds, like Pals is, Pals is amazing. I haven't gone to, I've heard uh, Gourmet is the place to be. Gourmet's burger is top notch. I gotta try it's, that. Yeah, it's really good. But uh, Holy, we, we've done uh, Holy Taco mm -hmm. regularly. Yep. Uh, the kids love Aubrey's. Um, Aubrey's uh, is a good local spot. Yeah, Rocks is, is great. Yep. I like Rocks. There's a, there's a few places in town that uh, like, uh, Southern Craft right around the corner. Mm -hmm. They're really, really good. So the, the food here is, is amazing. Uh, the, uh, the atmosphere here is even better. What's something surprising to you? Like, oh, I'm moving to Podunk, East Tennessee. And what's some, something surprising to you that we have that you were like, oh, I didn't think you'd have that. Or like, you guys have indoor plumbing. That's what a lot of people <laughs> <laughs> We do have the indoor plumbing. Uh, nice. For me, like values, you know, American values. It's, it's dead in some parts of the country, not all, and people need to realize that there are uh, parts of the country that still value that. What do you feel like is the reason that we, are, we have those still uh, I, I, in this area? In this area, uh, a lot of it is, uh, this is a strong area for uh, people's faith and religion, mm -hmm. and I think that has a lot of it. I, I, from Massachusetts, where they try to take, uh, take God out of everything. Uh, and they even tried to take God out of church during you know, COVID. They didn't want people to go to church. so. Uh, to see that almost tip on its head here and, and to see its effect in the community is, is pretty cool. Yeah, I think um, I, I, I'm with you. I believe our faith here. We love Jesus. We love guns. Yeah. People want to come here and be able to, you know, celebrate both. Freedom is back on the menu, boys. It is. Like, it is. <laughs> and so I think, um, yeah, it's funny that we do. You mentioned the word fear earlier. And I think, um, yeah, with the pandemic, it was all fear-based, right? Yeah. And then control came from that. And then... Well, any control is fear-based. Right. And people need to realize that. Like, there's nothing to really fear but fear itself. And as, as long as you don't fall for it, you know, and you do your own homework, you can usually come through it. And I listened to something the other day, and I think it was like 98% of the things you worry about aren't going to happen. Right. Like, they never happen. Yeah, no. Sure, all we're worried about it. They're so trying to spend ninety-eight percent of your life worrying about something that in no app. We just had this conversation today. Like in New England, they were preaching. You know, everybody's going to get a foot of snow across the entire state of Massachusetts. They got three inches in my area, and they just do that to sell. You know, it's, it's ratings, it's sell papers, and scare people. Let's talk about that because I think um, for me, I worry about content. Is it real? Is it, you know, like there, we're going to get this or this is happening. And you know, how do you, where do you go for truth besides like your channel? I mean, obviously you're looking at the bill, you're just kind of looking at it and it's your opinion on it, on some of it, but it's very factual, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it is what it is. And so where do people go for that? Because of the spin now, like, I don't know that I trust just watching the news anymore. You know, I, I, 
there's a couple places that I still will watch, like Newsmax. Yeah. I used to watch Fox, but they they jump the shark. Uh, Newsmax, and basically the people that I trust all are doing it independently, or they're doing it non-mainstream media. Yeah. Um, you can find people on like you can get a master's degree on YouTube. Really, I mean, I sound like I'm pumping YouTube, but you can get a master's degree. Anything you can want to find, you can find it there, including people who are out telling the truth. Yeah, and it's it's kind of sad, right? I mean, because the majority of America is just watching the news every day. They yeah. can, what we're getting fed is the truth. Yeah, it's uh, but yeah, there one are of the reasons I fled where I was. <laughs> well, yeah, but it's crazy because you've got these big supporters of the channels and you know of the you know the TV stations, and it's all about dollars, right? At right. the end of the day, and we 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 have the agendas, and and I don't. How do we get out of that cycle? Any idea? I think we are. Like, I think they, the big companies, the big dollars. I think they pushed it too far. You've seen certain companies just go too far and it's backfired. Look what happened with Bud Light, Target. you know, Target, all those things. Those companies lost huge revenue share. And that's how we unfortunately teach companies in America. They screwed up is by hitting them in the wallet. Uh, and now you saw what happened in the Super Bowl. Bud Light is going back to, you know, red blooded American things now. That's uh, right. Peyton Manning. Yeah, it's it is what it is. Uh, and more people need to understand they can vote with their with their dollar bills and make a huge change rapidly. Yeah. And uh, let's fast forward 10, 15 years down the road in America. What's your, what's your hope? What, do you, what would you hope to see America look like in 10 years? Like it was designed to be, uh, you know, in the late 1700s, early 1800s, where people, uh, we, in America, regardless of what, party we follow or align with we have more things more things in common than we do things that set us apart and we've gotten past that where we can actually talk to each other and realize hey man you know what we both like being safe we both like you know having good schools we both like not having the government tell us what to do yeah we might not like mean tweets or we might not like the current president or whatever but we can get past that right and if we can get past this divide that you know the the dollar bills in the in the world want to create so that they can control people, I think that will go a long way to getting us back to where this country was designed to be. Uh, yeah. We're very far from that in, in 10, 15 years. If the movement that has been kindled in the last couple of years continues, I think we're going to make great strides to that. I agree. I would love to see us unify and be proud again. You know, like I think they're they are trying to undermine just the pride in America. You know, it's like, oh, America, you know, this is the best country in the world. Look what happened on September 12th. Everybody was wearing an American flag, had a flag flying at their home, was had them on their vehicles. We became uh, one again. Mm -hmm. And it scared a lot of people, like, you know, the, the, the Soros's and the mm -hmm. Black Rock and stuff like that. You know, and, and it fell by the wayside, unfortunately, but we need to get back to that because, you know, America is the best place on the globe. Mm. And if it wasn't, they wouldn't be coming here by the millions. Yeah. You know, uh, this is a great place. We, we, uh, we are very welcoming. Uh, we have uh, the best constitution in the world. We have the ability to do a lot of things that in other places might get people thrown in prison or even worse. It's a great place. We just need to remember that. Yeah, I think um, that, that's my prayer that we, we come back to just a sense of pride. I mean, I remember when I was a kid in um, first grade and through like sixth or eighth grade, and, but we, we'd get up, we'd say the Lord's Prayer mm -hmm. and we'd say the Pledge of Pledge Allegiance of every morning. And then it turned into the Pledge of Allegiance and then a moment of silence. And then it was just the Pledge of Allegiance, you know? And so, and now like they're stripped, trying to, they are trying to strip. I don't know where we came up with this. Oh, one person doesn't like it. And so we got to get rid of it. Everybody else changed for one person rather than Where that one. Where did that come from? I don't understand it at all. Like, it's the progressive movement, man. Well, and I feel, well, and I feel like um, we as a body of believers and, you know, that have values that are like, oh, this is how we line up. I think we're a little too meek at times. Maybe mm -hmm. we're a little too quiet. We're like, oh, well, it's not loving to say no to that person. You know, it's loving to let them, oh, I get it. You it's know? powerful to say no to people sometimes. Your kids need to hear no. Amen. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, giving people trophies enough. all the time and wrapping people in bubble wrap doesn't help them as they get older. No. And I think we've tried to do that too much and coddle America. And 
yeah, it's kind of been sad to watch it, watch the divide, like you said earlier. Yeah. Um, because I don't, at our core, we love each other. Like, I don't care who you are. I, you know, my core, I love you. You were a creator. Our creator made you in his image, and I love you. And so if we could get everybody to feel that way, um, I think we could just continue to be a superpower. I agree, awesome. man. I agree. But we've got a lot of, a lot of people fighting against that for some reason, and I don't understand it. So I'm excited about your channel and what you do to kind of continue to spread the good news and, you know, and all the legislation that's going on and how do we fight that and how do we keep our rights. And so, yeah, thank you for doing what you do. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks for helping me find a house here. <laughs> I loved helping you find a house. I'm glad we got to connect. It's, um, it's fun when you get to connect with somebody and then they become a close friend, you know? And so I'm looking forward to us being friends for the next 30 years. Absolutely. It's going to be, it's going to be awesome. I'm glad you're putting up with me. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay. Anything I didn't ask you, you wish you like I had, you could share about, uh, just remember to tell them, your loved ones, you love them. Cause you never know when you're going to get a second chance. That's, mm -hmm. that's a big thing nowadays. You know, we, we seem to get tied up in, in what we think is important and we forget what's really important. And it's, that's the people who are closest to us. Amen. Yeah. And we are so lucky. We've got great families. We've got great wives that put up with us. It's, it's just great. We get you fired up. Like, let's go. Like you're just jacked. I want to, you know, just go take over the world. What, what's my coffee? Blackout coffee. Blackout <laughs> coffee. We didn't talk about that. Yes. Jared has a coffee company. Tell us about the Blackout Coffee. Uh, Blackout Coffee is a, uh, a coffee company that I am part owner of. We're in uh, now Fort Pierce, Florida. We're just went into our third facility because uh, we outgrew the other two uh, faster than we ever thought was possible. Thank you, everybody, for your support. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think, I mean, everybody Everybody who has a coffee company says theirs is the best, but uh, I say try it. It is delicious. I had some Sunday at our church. It was fantastic. Thank, thank you, you for that. Thank you. Thank you. It's, uh, it's, an, uh, it's pretty cool to hook up with. So the, my partners, they were from Massachusetts originally. They moved to Florida. They're serial entrepreneurs. They were viewers of the channel, and that's how we hooked up. And here I sit today as one of the owners of, you know, one of the fastest growing coffee companies in the country, and it's pretty cool. Isn't that crazy? What blows my mind? Here's something that just I can't fathom. Like, the Lord makes enough coffee every day for like 14 billion people. I don't know how many people are on the planet, but it seems like every person on the planet is drinking a cup of coffee every morning. Yeah. And then it's just amazing. Like, and then food too. Like, it just it, it, it baffles me. And I just think farmers, I think, you know, people who are providing the food, for providing coffee. Um, I think they're unsung heroes. I think we just expect that it's going to show up and we're going to have a cup of coffee. Well, or whoever, we're going to have, oh, there's going to be hamburger in the grocery store. Or whoever was the first person to boil a bean in water, that we owe them. Yes, <laughs> that person. Some <laughs> aborigine person down in somewhere, I don't know. But yeah, they're, they're, it's fantastic stuff. And you guys do a great job. And yeah, thank you. So thanks for the coffee. Thank you. Thanks for being my friend. Thanks for coming on the podcast. Um, thanks for what you do through your channel too. I think it's just exciting um, how you're you're shaping America on a bigger level now. Like as you get more and more followers, you're really helping to change and make changes in our country, which is pretty cool. Thank you. It's humbling. You know, it really is humbling. But it's it's also a, a heavy heavy task that you know now that it's gotten as big as it has and so many people depend on me like. Now I feel like I have to be there. I owe it to them. I don't yeah. really take time off. Which, right. This guy is, works. He is a hustler. He is working all but the I, time. But I love it, though. I mean, they say when you do something you love, you're really not working. And uh, I absolutely love what I do. I really do. Like, I, my wife would tell you I would work 24 hours a day if I could. Right. Um, it's, it's just, for me, it, I, I geek out on finding the things that government's trying to do to take away our rights. Yeah. And I, I geek out on telling people about it. And I also yeah. geek out on telling, you know, telling people thank you for defending our rights um, because, you know, those are often some of the most thankless jobs there are. Yeah. And that took my brain to like defunding the police and that kind of thing too. Like talk about that a little bit before we, we sign off. Like how can we support our local police, our, our military? What are some things that you feel like is best to do there, especially being a um, ex pop police officer? The biggest part is to have a, uh, so if you want to support your local police department, you need to get in, get active in, in talking to your, you know, your town selectman, your city council, your mayor, uh, your town administrator, wherever you live. Uh, they're, they're a big part of, you know, whether there are programs that are funded or not. Uh, it's, it's 
the grassroots is what actually changes those things. You know, we, the, the Obama beer summit is where things really, really changed. Uh, where police work, where, you know, no matter what you did, you were wrong and you were, you know, just challenged on everything you did, which is fine. I, I, I'm transparent. You know, I tried to be the most constitutional cop ever to lace up the boots, but, you know, it's just if you want to support them, they need to know you support them. Right. Yeah. And they're just like you and me, right? They're regular Joes. They've got a family they're just trying to feed. And yeah, wanna, yeah, most of them are solid, solid people. You know? They want to get home and, yeah, and don't, yeah, I mean, they're obviously. There are a few people that are bad and cause bad things to happen occasionally. Yeah, yeah. in every job. I mean, every are, job. You're going to make mistakes. There are bad doctors. You know, oh there gosh. are bad airline pilots. There are in every job, every profession. There, there is always one or two that put the bad look on everybody else. But you know, it, it takes a lot to you know be there when every, most people would flee. You know? Yeah, it takes a lot. So, you know, thank them. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming on the podcast. Thanks for having me, man. Oh, thanks man. for uh, taking a northerner under your wing. <laughs> I'm so glad we connected and I was able to help you <coughs> find a house. And so if you want to come meet Jared in person, you can move to Johnson City. I'd love to help you do that. Or if you want to invest in real estate and build wealth through real estate, we do a ton of property management too. But connect with him. He is a great guy. Buy some coffee through Blackout. It's an awesome product. Thank you. And I just, um, I thank you from the bottom of my heart for what you do to help protect our country and its rights. And so thank you for that, my friend. I appreciate it. And thanks for uh, helping my family relocate. It's a, you know, typically a very stressful time in, in somebody's lives and my kids are, you know, they have autism, so it was even harder. So and you made it extremely easy. Uh, if you guys and gals are looking to come in the area, I implore you to call Colin because yeah. he will take, not just take care of what you're doing, but to make, make sure your family's taken care of in, in the process. Oh, well, and we got, some great friends and a cute little dog named Pizgig too. <laughs> <laughs> so our neighborhood is a lot better by seeing your kids. I love watching them ride their bikes up and down the street. And it's just, you've got a sweet family. Thank you. Yeah, they're really sweet. And if you're thinking about moving anywhere in the country, connect with me because I can connect you with a great agent anywhere in the world. And, um, and we can give back to charities that are important to you too through that too. So we, we're trying to work on that program as well. So thanks so much for listening. Until next time, we'll talk to you soon. Appreciate it, buddy. See you, buddy. Thank you. Thank you.